Welcome back to Mr. Lee Teaches YouTube Tutorials and today I'm going to be talking to you about Screencastify. Screencastify is a free extension that runs in Chrome browser and you can use it today, it's that easy, to make student projects. So let's check it out. So here we are in my Chrome browser and I've got my little uh, Jamboard up here. I'm going to use that as kind of like a whiteboard to talk through this a little bit. Uh, but I have Screencastify already installed and if you do not already have it installed, you can just go to the website uh, screencastify.com and install it from there or you can go to the Chrome store. However you want to install it is up to you. Uh, but get it installed. So Screencastify is a free extension uh, with a premium side to it, but you don't need the premium side. As we can see from the pricing uh, on the free side, free for forever, uh, 10 minutes video length for free. If you're doing this as a student project or even as a teacher project, you're thinking two to three minutes max, maybe five minutes at the most uh, for something that you're going to do in a classroom or you're going to make tutorials for students. That is the link that I really shoot for and I tell teachers to shoot for. So a uh, 10 minute video length for free is amazing. Um, you can do 50 videos a month. That is a lot of videos. I do very well to get one video produced a month, uh, I mean a week. So um, 50 a month is, uh, is quite a lot. Um, it does throw a watermark on the corner of it, but that's not really a big deal because again, it's free and it's not that uh, obvious. Uh, but I do pay for the premium, just so that you know. Uh, $29 a year, super cheap for what it does. Uh, we can make gifts. I love making gifts and then use Screencastify for that. Uh, but that's another video. Let's get into the meat of it. So if I was a student and I was trying to talk about uh, state capitals, I can actually come in here and drop pins on state capitals that we are studying. And let's see, Tennessee, we're right there. And then, you know, I can actually talk through this as a student. Uh, I can talk about my project. If this was a, a document that I had written, a poem, what have you, I could talk through that while I looked at what I was doing. So recording the screen, recording the student, uh, maybe the face if you're looking for some kind of presentation skills, uh, but at least the voice. So you have that voice, that real, true, authentic voice where you can actually explain what you mean verbally, which is a lot easier for a lot of students than it is to actually write out what you mean. So you can actually gauge if learning has ta taken place. So let's look how to use Screencastify. So like I said, you'll have to sign in. It's going to ask for permissions. I'm going to allow it. I'm going to allow it. And here it pulls up all my recordings. I'm now signed in. So I can go back to what I was going to do and I can click on the extension and it pulls up. And now I get some options. I can use the browser tab. So I'm only going to record the tab that I'm in. So if I switch out of the tab, it's not going to show anything but the current tab. Um, if I do the desktop, that means if I switch between tabs, it's going to, the, you know, it's going to see what I see on the screen. Uh, browser tab is just going to be that one tab. Uh, desktop is going to be anything I see on the screen. So even if you have a PowerPoint, you can actually record a PowerPoint presentation with Screencastify, even if it's not in Google Drive or, or you don't open it through Google Drive because you can record the desktop. Um, or you can just do the webcam only, and that just is the webcam, uh, picture, audio, that kind of stuff. So you can select your microphone. Uh, I've got a couple different microphones because of what I do with these videos. Uh, and then I can also turn on my webcam and now I'm all set to record. You can go down to more options and it gives you a countdown. So as soon as you hit record, it'll say three, two, one, and then it's recording. So you have that lead in time. Uh, drawing tools is really cool. I'll try to show you that in just a minute. Uh, system audio. So if I'm doing something that actually has audio, so a video is playing or music in the background or something like that, it'll actually pull the audio off the system so it doesn't have to come out of the speakers and into a microphone and back in there to be processed. It's a lot better system audio, if that makes any sense. And the show webcam preview, that actually puts a picture of you in the corner of the screen while you're talking. So you see you talking. Um, to me, that's super distracting. Uh, students find it very distracting that I, I've dealt with. Uh, so I just typically tell, tell people to leave that off. Um, system audio is a good one to leave on though. And um, unless you know that it's just your voice, the student's voice, 
and the visual of the screen that you're wanting, not necessarily any kind of music or, or video playing in the background of the screen. So we'll just turn that off for now. And so that's it. All I got to do now is hit record and it will record. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reposition my cameras so I can actually record this screen while recording this tutorial video. So I'll be right back. So here we are. I just clicked record with Screencastify. It gave me the countdown three, two, one. And now I'm down here in the corner. I can actually move me around uh, so that you can see me better or I'm not covering up anything important. And so it's using my webcam again um, and, and I can move anything on here. And you see now Screencastify actually will put that red circle around where you click. So if you're clicking somewhere and you're trying to do a tutorial, uh, it's very easy to see where those clicks are. You can also pop up a little timer to see how long you've actually been recording. That kind of stays there in the corner. Um, you can mark on it. So if you are in a, a PowerPoint or, or something, um, or Google slide, you can actually use these colors down here and you can illustrate stuff and you can point out that, you know, that's where your picture is. And if you don't like it, you can come back in and erase. And you see, it doesn't erase what's actually there. Um, you can also pause the recording down here and then this is the highlight tool. So if you want to highlight where the mouse is, so if it's very important to follow through some steps, so if you need to go through and show a particular set of steps or a particular set of clicks, uh, this is a great tool for that because it makes it very easy to see where that mouse actually is and what it's actually clicking on. Um, and then if you don't want the mouse at all, you can turn off the red clicks. And then if you click this one, you'll be able to see it. I can still see my mouse, but the mouse should disappear if I don't move. There it goes. So the mouse disappears if you don't move it. So it's not in the way and distracting. Um, but that's the gist of what you do when you record. You just record the video. That's it, plain and simple. And so we'll stop the recording and I'll switch back over to my other recording software and we'll show you how to share. Because if you can't share the video you just made, then what's the point in making the video? So right back again. So we're back. And once I stopped the video, just like when you start a video, you have the record button here. If you click back on the extension, you have the stop recording button. Um, but once you're done, it opens up a new tab that we are now in, and it has the screen recording there. There's a few things we can do here. Uh, we can save it. So we can download it uh, to our hard drive or to our Chromebook. Uh, we can export it we can export it as an animated GIF. So if it was a very short one, just click here, click here, click here kind of thing, you could export it as a GIF. It automatically does that for you, which is awesome. Uh, now, you can also edit. The editor is part of the premium package. So I will show you this, but know that this is the $29 a month, a year. And so with this, I can basically trim the beginning of the video and I can trim the end of the video, but I can't do any kind of real editing. Uh, with this so it's not that great of a tool if you're thinking oh I'm gonna be able to do you know the same thing I can with iMovie with Screencastify for free it's not quite there uh, but you can trim the beginning and trim the end um, of the video the big thing is the share button so if I click the share button I can either share it to YouTube or I can share it to Google Drive now it's set to default to privacy only you can view the video so you can go in here and change it to unlisted which means anyone who has the link or anyone can find the video. So this changes the permissions in your Google Drive when it saves it. So if you put it as unlisted, that means people who have the link can view the video. And that's typically what you want and that's typically what you want your students to have it set as as well. Now, you can copy the link right here and it tells you it's been copied or you can actually have your students go straight into Google Classroom. You click here, it takes about three clicks to get into your classroom. We won't go through that process, but uh, it is a very simple process to do that. So like I said, we can either just download the video and then we can put it in Google Drive as we wanted or if we're using something like WeVideo, to edit videos and our students are making clips, we're editing them, editing them together, or the students are using WeVideo themselves and they need a clip of this, this, and this, and they want to edit it together in WeVideo, um, this is where you would want to save it to the disk 
Uh, or actually, you could just save it as in your Google Drive as well uh, for we video editing, which will be another video hopefully coming soon. But we can also delete it too. So if it was just a really bad video, we can preview it. So here we are. I just clicked record with screen. And so this is the, the gist of it. Uh, I hope that you will encourage your students to think of video type projects or you yourself as the teacher would think of video type projects. Or honestly, just do some explanation of instructions or, or to quick tutorials or if you're a lab teacher, um, just do some, some examples in a video and add that to your directions and just see how much smoother things run and how much more the students actually do pay attention to the video um, and they then understand the directions. I remember when I was in the classroom, it was so hard to get kids to read the directions and actually follow the directions. But once I started adding video clips of the important pieces of the directions, then things were so much smoother. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like my content. That lets me know to keep putting out videos like I am. Uh, I appreciate you coming and watching. If you like this content, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, give me a thumbs down. Let me know. I actually look at those and pay attention. And leave me a comment in the in the space below this video and let me know what you think of this video. Think, let me know if you use videos in your classroom, if your students use video projects. Give me some examples. I love seeing that kind of thing and I love being able to share it with our community. Um, until next time, thanks for watching.